Hello. So I changed the material of the base floor a little bit just so that we would be able to tell it apart from the rooms. And this was the room that we built in the last episode. Where this epi in this episode we're going to go ahead and build the bedroom. Uh, and after that I probably will do a lot of the other rooms off screen, but uh, it's worth doing the bedroom on screen because it's got some complicated geometry to it. So that means that we'll want to do some stuff that's uh, more complicated. If we go into edit mode here and uh, take a look at this room, what we can do is we can select two points that are shared. We can even do it with just one point. Um, and then we can hit P to punch them out and just punch out the selection. And that's okay because as long as we don't select uh, some a whole face, it'll stay with the original model as well. So we basically just duplicated those. It's just a quick way to do it without actually having to duplicate things. But you can see that we now have plane one, plane two, plane... Let's go ahead and name some of these so that we're not entirely um, confused as to what's going on. Like so. And now this, uh, this room here, we need to extend it, but there are a couple of details that we need to keep in mind. And one of those details is that we cannot have um, a complex shape like we have down here. Uh, we can't just fill it with one face. We're going to need a number of faces to fill out every single um, uh, way that the, that the room moves. So we're going to go ahead and extend out to here. And you can see that this passes out of the edge, so we'll pull it back in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to form another face by uh, cr creating this section here, like so. But we need to make it so that it links up to the original face, but we can't simply link it up. We need to make everything, does it, it doesn't have to be quads, but we need to have slices at every possible uh, angle. So here we just cut in the middle, and I'll move it to where it needs to be. And I have to move it a little bit further, half a meter, because we weren't working with uh, whole meters there. And then we fill it in, and you can see that we now have this, this room here. Um, and then we can continue that by going down here. But we need to have fill in this gap here, and we don't have anything across this area. So we need to create something. But you can see that the way we've got it set up there's nothing over here to create. Well, that's, uh, I mean, it won't, it won't loop cut because this is a triangle. Well, that's okay. We can slide this up and then we can manually cut it by, um, by hitting K and then it'll pop to that node. And then if we hold down E, it will lock to the correct, uh, so hold on, is it not, is it not E? It's C. C will angle constraint, but you have to make sure you're doing this exactly head-on because otherwise the camera will screw up. Um, but it's not really angle constraining properly at the moment. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and make sure. Yeah, that's straight. It's a little bit finicky. I'm not happy about it, but good enough. All right, and there we have that cap there, and this will be our floor plan for the bedroom. It's a fairly straightforward floor plan, but we had to create all of these as individual uh, faces. We couldn't have any complex, um, uh, you know, uh, concave end guns or whatever. That would have would have screwed up our uh, our room. So the next step is the same as it was with the first room. We just extend up, and then we can move all of these in. Uh, rather than doing it via the drag function, however, I'm going to do it by manually. Uh, grab x point one, and then that way I won't have to continually switch between views. Grab x negative point one, grab z point one negative point one, grab z negative point one. Oh, grab z point one. There we go. And then we can just grab all that stuff again and bring it down, like so. Oh, it looks like I got Z backwards, didn't I? I guess something wrong here. I did. I meant to do Y, but I did Z. Brilliant. Grab Y, point 0.1, or negative point 0.1, whatever. Grab Y, point 0.1. There we are. Unity and Blender don't have the same Z axis. 
All right. And so here you can see that we got most of the points correct, but there are a couple that are a little bit screwy. Uh, in particular, this guy here is off down here, but then up here it kind of wanders back into true. And that's a bad way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, move these guys, grab x.1, negative 0.1. Oh, did I grab the... I just want to grab off of the... Alright, well, let's undo our dropping them back on so we can grab them. There we are. So these guys here, we need to actually move them to one side um, so that they are the same the same angle as everything else. These guys here need to be dragged down. I just didn't see them. But you can see that what that has made is we've made this thing uh, slant funny. Now we could drag this down, but if we do that, uh, we end up m moving it like this, so then we'd have to take this guy and grab x.1, so just by massaging it, we can continue to massage it. Uh, and if it doesn't end up perfect, that's okay. Uh, no one will notice. But in this case, I'm actually not going to do that stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it kind of uh, teetering uh, with this slightly awkward um, curve. And that's okay. Uh, the floor, when we UV map it, it will automatically work out. Um, so we're not going to worry too much about that being slightly off. All right, and now you can see that we have the same outline around our shape that we did with this guy over here, but we've gotten it slightly complicated because we have all of these internal floor faces, uh, internal floor angles, because I said we couldn't have any end guns, so we've got these lots of complicated, uh, this, this complicated bullshit happening. Something we can just delete. We don't need it. Um, but you have to make sure not to delete the actual lines you plan to use. You just want to delete the lines that you're not planning to use like that. And there we are. Now we have a nice clean floor plan. And we can select this. And just like we did for that guy, we can extend it straight up. Oh, need to grab those as well. This one won't be quite as nice, unfortunately, because it will actually get rid of the floor. See? So because that's going to be annoying, we're not going to do it quite like that. And instead, we're just going to extend, uh, we're going to uh, um, go into line select mode and deselect that line. And we'll just extend up the outer perimeter, like so. And that leaves us with no roof, but that's OK. What we can do is, first things first, we need to invert these walls because they're pointed the wrong direction. There we go. Uh, but the roof is actually something where we can um, duplicate the exact same faces without much difficulty just by manually filling them in. And I'm sure there's a way to do this that doesn't require any kind of manual intervention, but I don't happen to know it. Um, and we can take some shortcuts with the roof uh, and get some, some faces that we would normally not want for the base floor. Uh, and usually that's a sign that we've got a line on the base floor that we don't actually need, which, uh, which is actually true. I don't think we need this that particular line, um, but it's okay. With the, an extra line won't do us any harm. So now we have two rooms right next to each other. And what we need to do is we need to make it so that the room has the same hole cut out of it in the places it needs holes cut out of it. Now, as you might remember, the first way to do that is to make sure that we've got one meter lines all across this area. And another thing you might remember is that this looks out over the drop rather than being an opaque wall. So we're going to grab these faces and just delete those edges, and that edge too, and that edge too. And that leaves us with a room that looks out over the area, see? But we do need to cut some holes for some doors, so uh, to do that, we will do that exactly. And you can see that what I've done here is I've lined up this line here to match the far door exactly, and that was on purpose. So let's just go ahead and add in a new face cut here. Oh, it doesn't go to the ground. What is this? Oh, that's the lamp. Let's let's move the sun out of the way. We do definitely don't need it screwing up my vision. All right. 
um, it looks like the it looks like this doesn't want to get sliced. Um, it'll run across the roof, but it won't run down to the floor. And I think that's because this corner is a complex corner. So in order to deal with that, what we'll do is we will just cut it exactly like this, and then we will use the K cut and bring it down like so. And that'll give us the exact line. Oh, I cut the wrong wall, damn it. So first things first, we're going to hide these guys. There. Now we're going to do it. So we cut this line here. I guess we didn't already cut it. Hmm. Uh, and then we use K to cut from here. And we use C to cement it on. There we go. Did that not work? What the hell's going on? There we go. Uh, sometimes that is a little bit persnickety when you try and do a straight on cut. Um, Alt H, bring these guys back. Now you can see that we've got this line that just kind of crawls across the roof and then ends arbitrarily. We can actually just delete that loop entirely. Um, we want to dissolve it, not delete it. There we go. And that will, we don't need that line across the roof. That wouldn't serve any purpose. Now if we zoom in here, you can see that this is. Uh, actually not perfectly aligned. In fact, this C cut here didn't end up correctly aligned either. The whole thing is badly aligned. Um, so first things first, we're going to scale Y0, and that'll bring it into perfect alignment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab X 0.05. I don't know, sorry, grab Y 0.05. And that is just about right. It might be a little bit off. I can't actually tell. I think it's like maybe 0.01 meters off, um, and that's okay. The um, the door frame has that much slosh built into it, so I'm not too worried. And this guy, we'll need to move him up to the top of the door frame. So just go ahead and grab that and move it up, like so. And then of course we just delete this one line here, and we finished our door. And so now the door we want can be slotted in there. And it'll be a 20 centimeter thick. Sorry, it got noisy for a second, so I've kind of lost track of what I said and what I haven't said. But basically, the door frames are lined up now. And if we were to stick a door in there, a 20 centimeter thick door, it would work great. We do have a couple more doors we need to build. We need to build this door here. And we also need to build the sliding door for the closet. So that's just the same practice over and over and over again. Um, but as before, we'll need to hide the wall that's near us so that we can get to the far wall without accidentally screwing anything up. There we go. Now there is no current existing door for here, so when I build this I've got to just uh, uh, build it however I would like. And because of that I'm rather than going to, rather than using this loop cut tool, I'm going to use the cut tool. Um, normally I'd use the loop cut tool, but as you might have noticed it's malfunctioning kind of screwy and I'm um, I guess I can probably fix that by hiding the roof tile, or the roof face as well. There we are. So now, when I put this in, it doesn't crawl up the roof, but it still doesn't go all the way to the ground either. That's so weird. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I have a feeling this is something to do with an end gone that I'm not seeing but I'm not entirely sure. Now, as you can see, when you move it along here, it doesn't actually move according to meter chunks. Instead, it moves accord according to an arbitrary size that the um, uh, that's a percentage of the wall's size. But you can right-click to place it directly in the middle, and since we've been using round units, that means that it's exactly in the middle of something, and we should be able to just grab Y.05, there you go, move it to exactly on the line. And then we can use the K cut tool with the line there here. And that'll give us a nice sharp line. And we need to repeat the process. And again, grab X.05, no, grab Y.05, and the K cut tool, C to lock it to the, there. 
Uh, and now we have defined the door's edges. Now, of course, this door isn't the right size because we want it to be uh, 1.2 meters wide. So we just wanted to determine how exactly we want that to line up in terms of uh, exterior space. And I think what we'll do is we will move this. I'm not, I'm not grab y.2. I uh, forgot I don't have. Sorry, I didn't have that on the whole time. Um, so this means that we'll have a door that is slightly off to the right. So rather than that, let's grab y negative 0.1, and then this guy grab y negative 0.1. There we go. And now if we were look at it, if we look at it, these are our doors, and you can see that they are 1.2 meters. And we can just delete this face or this edge, delete two faces, and we've got a door. And that'll be our hallway door. Now, over here we have a closet door, and you might remember that the closet here is a walk-in closet. Uh, and we've drawn the door as close to this wall here, but it's not going to be a um, opening door. We're going to make it a sliding door, which means that what will happen is we'll have uh, two doors that one will slide into the other. So really this whole wall will be more or less doors. Um, so to do that, we all, we're going to just do the exact same thing. And you can see that this one happens to line up specifically on a meter interval, and that's because the edges of this wall happen to be perfectly lined up that way too. But once again, the, the floor didn't work out. Um, and I think that's because of the lip I'm leaving, and that's something I'm willing to accept. I'm okay with it. So then we'll just repeat the process. go. And we want this to be significantly larger than the primary door. Um, so let's go ahead and make it uh, two and a half meters wide. So there's two meters and there is a half a meter. And that'll give us a lot of, well let's go ahead and make it even bigger than that. Let's make it three meters wide. There we are. And that'll give us a lot of space to put in a sliding door. And so that's going to be our closet exit. And you can see that the rooms are starting to shape up, and we're starting to get a feel for it. Now these are all untextured, uh, uh, I wouldn't call them placeholder rooms, because this is actually the mesh we'll be developing later on, but they're very much um, uh, untextured and, and basic in terms of how they are constructed. Uh, we don't have any of the stuff that goes in the rooms, the walls aren't correctly textured, um, we don't have, this here is not going to be just a single wall, it's going to have some thickness to it. Uh, and we're going to have to deal with that later on. But chances are there's no real reason for me to continue to do these rooms over and over and over on camera. So what I may do is I may block out the rest of the rooms off camera. Um, I probably won't continue on with this series unless there's some interest. But basically, uh, you should be able to see the core idea here is that when you go into Unity, and by the way, you can do this with modular rooms as well. You don't have to do it with these perfectly pre you know pre locked together rooms. You can you can build yourself some Lego rooms and use the same the same idea here where as long as this vertex this vertex and this vertex line up, in Unity you can drag the rooms together and they will snap together. Uh, and that will give you uh, a good combination of chunky rooms and uh, perfect placement.